Hello everyone and welcome back to another session of Dark Souls 2 PvP and another weapon showcase. This time I am using the Gurm Great Hammer, the Anvil on a Stick. Now this weapon, aside from being extremely heavy, is extremely damaging and is really fun to use. Now getting started with it, it requires 40 strength and 5 dexterity. It has an A scaling in strength, no dexterity scaling. It weighs 20 units, making it one of the heavier weapons in the game, and it has a physical base damage at plus 9, I only have this thing at plus 9, I ran out of slabs, of uh, 408. That is significant, that is a lot of damage, especially with that A scaling, it is very scary, just sort of like that lag right there. That was, that was kind of scary too, a little bit terrifying, but you know, I, I managed. Um, it's got a counter damage base of 100, and poise damage is 60. So when poise actually starts to work, we'll be able to, you know, stun people relatively easily with this thing. Now, its attack rating for me with my build is 570, which is fantastic. It's one of the heavier hitting weapons that I've used so far, and I gotta say, I had a really good time with it. Now, this weapon has some pretty bad things about it that are going on. Uh, first of which I would definitely have to say would be the slow swing speed. It really is not too great. It's it's slow, guys. It really is. Um, other than that, I would say that the next biggest con of the weapon would be the moveset. Now, I like this weapon's moveset. I really do. But its one-handed R1s leave a bit to be desired. The range on them is incredibly short. Uh, it sort of makes up for it with its two-handed moveset, and I really do enjoy the two-handed moveset quite a bit but the one-handed moveset leaves a bit to be desired. Although, the, um, what's it called? The what's it called attack? The second R2 is fantastic and is really good at catching people off guard. Now, the two-handed moveset is what I love on this weapon. I really do. It can dead angle very well. It does a ton of damage to the opponent's stamina. As you can see, two hits, and I was able to break his guard right there. And then just another one shot. So this thing is scary, guys. This thing truly, truly is scary. It's something that I personally would not want to fight against. Um, it does leave a bit to be desired when you're using it, though, as I've said. Now, the pros of the weapon, I would definitely have to say the pros right there, that pancake. That was my first Dark Souls 2 pancake that I've landed. So that made me quite happy. Uh, and I got a guard break on him as well. So yeah. Um, the pros. I would definitely have to say that the biggest pro of the weapon would be the fact that I'm constantly one-shotting people on any kind of critical that I do. Now there is a way to actually defend against that I found out. Apparently the jester's, the jester's top, it negates criticals, it just turns them into regular attacks, which is interesting and slightly concerning, but I think that it's not that huge of a deal. Um, other pros of the weapon, definitely its two-handed moveset, that spin attack with its R2 is fantastic. If somehow they manage to stay standing after you hit them with it, you can follow it up with the second R2, which is pretty much a guaranteed pancake. Very limited range though, very, very limited. Uh, I did find myself sort of feeling bad when I was using this weapon, because it's a slow weapon, and I was trying to punish people more often than I normally would. And, you know, it it didn't really feel very nice, I guess, is the way to say it. I was going for a lot of rollback stabs, going for a lot of criticals in general, because it's a slow weapon, it's got some limited reach to it on its one-handed moveset and on its attacks in general, really. And, I mean, the damage output is fantastic, but its tracking ability just kind of sucks at times, especially on those one-handed R1s. Now, the two-handed R1s, as I said before, moveset is a lot better, they're more of a wide swing, and you can do stuff like that combo I just did, which is very satisfying. People are always going on now about the Hellbeard and it's spinning. Nah, it's all about this thing and its ability to spin with that two-handed R2, because that is fantastic. But, you know, that's just, that's my opinion, so, whatever. <laughs> Overall, fun weapon to use. Not necessarily the most viable thing, considering poise doesn't exactly work and you can get stunned by anyone using a faster weapon. Uh, right there, I believe he's using the Murakumo. A little hard to tell with Crystal Magic Weapon on it, but I believe that's the Murakumo's moveset. So that's a thing, I guess. Um, 
yeah, overall, it's a fun weapon to use, not the most viable, but when you get a critical, oh man, you get a critical. Now right here, that's a good example of the dead angling I was talking about, so that really just kind of proves the point right there. I mean, picture's worth a thousand words, a video is worth more than I can speak in the time of the video, so yeah, dead angling is a thing. It's a very, very nice thing, and it definitely is one of the good pros about the two-handed moveset. So, yeah, and man, I love that spinning attack. I really love that spinning attack. But anyway, this is the last fight in the video, guys. I hope you found this helpful one way or another. So, yeah, please like, subscribe, and all of that good stuff. And I don't really have anything else to say, so I will see you guys next time.